The issue around the Great Barrier Reef is a huge, huge complex issue and that to single out the agricultural practices as the, uh, as the big bad wolf is, um, is not helpful. I think it's become a political argument and I think agendas are at play and we're the sacrificial lambs for that agenda. The reef regulations are not going to solve any problems on the ground practically. They're just going to obstruct and deter people from doing the right thing. And that's what we're currently doing. We're doing the right thing. What this bill does is creates uncertainty. You will have a situation where a single person unilaterally can change the goalposts. Of course, it's going to shake confidence. And when you shake confidence, people don't invest. One man has got sole control over the regulations. He can change regulations at any time he feels with no checks and balances, no accountability. One of the most worrying worrying components of the proposed reef regulations bill is the access to data. It can be little bits of pieces of data can be taken from different sources and it doesn't really tell the whole picture. And if it's taken out of context or treated subjectively then, uh, and not objectively, it's very dangerous. Cane farmers are proactively involved in investing in innovation and technology on our farm to secure the sustainable future of the reef. You will end up that investment will cease, it'll stifle investment, and we do not want that to happen. We want investment to keep going. So we need security into the future. The amount of investment, not only in money, but in time. So, you know, these farming systems that we've developed, we started on those back in 2000. So we've been going for 19, well, 20 years we've been going at this for. So these things, they don't, they don't happen overnight. Some people will say that the government has put all the money for us to, to change our practices. That is a total um, untruth. Um, and the majority of the, of the financial burden has fallen on growers themselves. Well, my family, and I speak on behalf of a lot of families in this catchment area, have spent millions of dollars over the years. We're a long way out in front of the actual reef regulations. My worry is for the other people coming behind that um, it, doesn't, it doesn't give much incentive for them to, to follow through into this world best practice model. The practice change has to be that it doesn't affect our profitability and productivity while looking after the environment. If we haven't got a profitable industry into the future, that not only affects us, that affects every regional town up and down the Queensland coast because we are the lifeblood of the Queensland coastal regions, every city within that region. And that has a knock-on effect that it affects the Queensland economy. We need to cooperate and collaborate with government. We need to work in a partnership because by working in a partnership, we can obviously secure significant environmental dividends. The case on the ground is, is that farming communities scientific communities and all of the people that care about the reef are working together behind the scenes. It's an issue that we all care very much about, but we can't do all the heavy lifting on our own. We're addressing our issues, however there's wider issues in, involved, such as climate change. To secure the sustainable future of the reef, we need to scrap this bill.